they're very good at it, and it seems like that's not going to stop. Well, China's making some I'm, insane I'm worried cars. about all kinds of things that they're doing. They're buying up the real estate all over America. They own large swaths of some of our biggest cities. I mean, it's like they're they're aggressive on a few fronts. It's kind of crazy they're allowed to buy land around military bases. It's unreal. That's like, what? It's unreal. Like, what? Imagine trying to pull that off in China. And that's the difference between having a guy who's been in power for decades, yeah. really knows how to run the country, versus some person who got elected in a popularity contest. It's also a difference of when people see the country as a, as a going out of business sale. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're Let's selling farms, selling everything, <laughs> you know, from out, out from under everybody. And it's a yard sale. <laughs> it's the way people are treating America right now is just to throw a sign on it. Make your best offer, come in and loot. Isn't it funny that if you said you have to be American to buy American property, people would be up in arms? They'd be up in arms and they'd but say it's racist. And the real estate lobby would come out and go, it's racist. Because they want that Russian because money. Because they want that oligarch dollar. Like you and, were the one that told me first yeah. about these apartment buildings in New York City. They're yeah, they're like ghost cities. This is another thing we all go, and I just read these things. They go, look at these Chinese ghost cities. They built all these cities and nobody lives in them. And I go, if you go to any of these buildings by Central Park, there's like twenty percent of it occupied, thirty percent of it, seventy percent of it is straight up money laundering, where it's people that have purchased multiple apartments under the name of an LLC, a limited liability corporation. And by the way, they've got a lot of them. There's not just one. There's so many of them, shell corps, that you can barely find who owns it. And it causes the price of everything to go up. And they're not living in the city. They're not contributing. They're not tipping at restaurants. They're not buying tickets to Yankee games. They're doing it to move their money out of Russia, China, the United Arab Emirates, Brazil, India, wherever. They're stashing it in these buildings. And it's causing the the prices of all of the real estate around it to skyrocket. Yeah, the real estate in New York is bananas. Well, it's L.A. It's 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 even in you know cities like Austin. Obviously, there's not as much of that, but you know, but there are foreign buyers in this market that have pushed it up. Everywhere, you know? everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Um, sold for a whopping two. Oh my God! Yeah, this apartment sold for two hundred thirty-eight million dollars, the highest recorded price. For a residential property, billionaires rose a home to eight ultra luxury skyscrapers, yeah. each equipped with luxurious amenities ranging from cinema rooms to yeah. saunas. Look at that. The average sale price, $9.8 million, and that's in that part of the city. That is the part of the city that is the favorite of foreign money. Look at it says here. As of 2022, there are 772 unpurchased units. Because they've built these buildings specifically for money laundering. Money laundering. Wow. This is not built for regular rich people. Most regular wealthy people cannot afford to live in a $50 million apartment. Or a $238 million. Or a $238 million apartment. So the whole thing is incredibly... You know, it's 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 completely manipulated. So it's not a real market right. that has anything to do with supply and demand. It's artificially manipulated by a lot of wealthy people, and then the real estate lobby loves it. They want it, and the sure. developers like it. Sure. And so those big money people love it. And, and you so know, what's the money? How's the money laundering part of it work? Because they take money out of whatever country, and then they stash it in America in real estate. Mm. So they'll come in and buy something cash under an LLC, and that however much money that would have been in their home country, because some of those countries are volatile, mm -hmm. and the governments of those countries could decide, okay, you all have money, it's 20% it's of it's now ours. Right. Here's the new tax. Right. Give me, I mean, there's people that try to do it here. Yeah. They, they propose wealth taxes, things like that, mm -hmm. all the time, right? Some, the of time. Them are, some of them are, are make some sense, some of them are ludicrous, but those people, are a bit paranoid. There's also political instability in a lot of those countries. And then there's people that just don't like taxes. And there's people that have made money, narco trafficking, human trafficking, doing all kinds of things, right? So there's people that go, I have a lot of illicit capital that needs to go to real estate in London. There's an area in London called Mayfair. It's all Russian oligarchs. There's areas, you know, and London is even more than New York. London is the, mo is the home for international money laundering. Really? It's the shadiest city in the world. It's really cool. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> um, it really is. I mean, that's the thing about these people. They are fun. Um, and uh, London is a financial capital halfway between New York and, and Asia. You have the biggest money in the world in London. Because historically, it has been 
you know, New York's amazing. And New York's the greatest city in the world in the sense that I think it's the most representative. But London has always been the home of, like, international finance since, I mean, you know, I mean, we're talking about, you know, it goes like there's, there's a part of London called the City of London. This is a small little part of it. And it's an area called Knightsbridge. And that's where they have, like, one Hyde Park. And one Hyde Park is this building with, like... $150 million apartments and all these Saudi kids are driving like Bugattis and Lamborghinis there and everything. And if Harrods is there, the famous store, and it's just a signal to the ultra wealthy. This is where you come. You want your kids to be raised as, you know, British gentlemen and learn the ways of, but it's a home of like international finance and it's been, it's a cool place, but <laughs> you don't, I don't know how you unwind all of this. You don't. You, you don't, don't really unwind it now. I mean, also most people don't understand it. So they who, don't understand. Who's going to run it? Who's going to? Where, where's all the money going to go? How you it's hard it? to fight these people yeah. because they. That's the problem. It's like everyone kind of wants to be them, and then the people that don't want to be them, you know, they will kill you. That's the problem. They will blackmail you, and if that doesn't work, they will kill you. Mm. This is the thing because they are the top of the food chain, and when you are at the top of the food chain, you're not going to give that power up without a tremendous fight. Um, and I think that's really where, where a lot of, a lot of it comes down to is they're preserving their position on the top of the hierarchy. Imagine if the United States made a law where you couldn't buy real estate unless you're an American citizen, New York city apartment buildings would, it would be a bloodbath. But by the way, not only would it be a bloodbath there, it would be a bloodbath everywhere. And then people would look at their 401ks and go, all these I'm invested in is tanked. That's the other problem because right. all all of the right. stuff they're invested in is based on a lot of investments being made by those companies like BlackRock and Vanguard and State Street and Citadel or Goldman. So it, it's just one of the creepiest things they're doing is yeah. buying residential homes and leasing them to people. Yeah, because they don't want people to own their homes. They don't want people to have the power of home ownership or the dignity of home ownership. Is that what it is, or is it is prof? It's profitable to buy homes and lease. Them. It's profitable because they, but they. That's they, why they're doing it. Do you yes. really think there's like some insidious? Like thing, like they don't want people to have homes, like really? Yes, because I think they go that, I think they look at it and say, Americans will be happy renting. I mean, that's the famous article. By 2030, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. Right, but that's just those WEF dorks. Yeah, but those WEF dorks are incredibly powerful amongst a crew of people. They all get together. They all these conferences, whether they meet, and it's again, it's not like always nefarious, but they go to like Davos or Bilderberg or whatever.